Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a sunflower with a quote. I am doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas that I have painted with the color Payne's Gray. So Payne's Gray is a very dark gray color. It almost, it reminds me of like a chalkboard color. Um, like if you were to paint on a chalkboard, it's like a kind of a, a lighter black, kind of a black that has more of a gray tone to it. So if you don't want paints gray, you can also just paint your pan canvas with Mars black and that should be fine. So we're working on a dark background for this tutorial so we don't have to paint the background. Um, but if you have a mess up painting, you can just simply paint a layer of paints gray over your painting and you can recycle a canvas that way. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw our sunflower. So I'm using a bowl that happens to be six inches in diameter. So this circle is the, the middle of the sunflower and it's going off the edge of the canvas. It's not going off um, like in the middle of the circle. It's a little bit higher than the middle. So that's how it's situated. Um, we wanna leave enough room for like the quote at the top. So we have maybe an inch and a half sticking down below. So not exactly in the middle, a little bit higher than the middle part of that circle. So place, your six inch circle. If you have a bowl that's six inches, that's perfect. If you, have, if you want, you can use a compass. Uh, it doesn't have to be six inches. It could be five inches or seven inches. So something relatively that size. And just take your uh, pencil. This is a white chalk pencil, by the way. You can use just regular chalk if you don't have a chalk pencil, but I like these chalk pencils because they give you thin lines and they're easier to control. And then each of the petals is about six inches high. So I'm gonna use my ruler to kind of give me a guideline for how large this first petal needs to be. So I just took my ruler and made a mark at the six inch mark at the top of above the circle. And that's how long my petal needs to be. So this sunflower has long, like elongated petals. They're not very wide, so they're kind of thinner. Um, the base is kind of flat, and it goes outwards like in a curve. And the top, it doesn't go pointed at the top, but the top part is a little bit curved at the top, so it's not exactly pointed. So if you want, you can use your ruler to kind of make a mark for each of the petals, but eventually you'll just kind of eyeball how long your petals are gonna be and you don't really need the ruler for each of the petals. But I'm gonna do a second petal over here. So kind of the same thing. Make sure your bottom piece is flat on the circle. The top part doesn't go pointed, it goes kind of curved. And that one, my edge kind of curved to the right a little bit. Um, I am varying the petals to make them look a little bit different on the tip of each petal. And I'm also doing some overlapping here. So in between those first two petals, I did two more that were underneath those and one was underneath the other. So as you're doing these petals, you wanna have some that are overlapping each other. So some that are in the front, but then we have some that are in the back. And when we do the painting part, we're gonna be painting our back petals first. So you wanna make sure that you have plenty of back petals in between your front petals, and that's gonna give our sunflower some really pretty um, color variation and depth and make it look somewhat realistic. So down here on the lower right part of the corner, I'm just kind of guessing where these petals go. They're going off the canvas. We can see the bottom part, but we can't see the full piece. So we just kind of draw it to the edge of the canvas and let that be kind of ambiguous down there. So over here, I'm gonna do another petal. that might be slightly overlapping the one on the right. So a similar shape, but then we can have one behind it. So we have the edge of that, but we don't really see the bottom of that one. Same with right here. So you want to make sure you do plenty of behind the petal petals. <laughs> and then so this one is going to be right next to the next one. Occasionally you can grab your ruler to make sure your petals are relatively all six inches. If they're not all the same length, that's okay. Sunflower petals do not all have to be the same length. And then we'll do our behind the petals here. So I'm just drawing the, the edge part that we see. And that one kind of tilted to the left and that's okay because sunflower petals kind of tend to like go 
different angles. And then down here in the lower left part of our sunflower, we have another more petals that are just kind of going off the canvas. So that's it for the drawing portion of this. I am gonna go ahead and start the painting portion. So the colors, I used a few different yellows for this sunflowers. I used cadmium yellow medium hue. I used yellow oxide. I also used titanium white and burnt umber. So the white is gonna help us create some different tints of the yellows to make them look lighter. And then the brown is gonna be used to make some of the yellows darker for some of the darker areas of our petals. So we're gonna utilize those four colors to create all the different varieties of yellows that we see in this sunflower. And I'm using a number four round brush. So I'm gonna start this painting by doing all the back petals first. And all the back petals are a darker color. So I'm going to mix about equal parts yellow oxide to burnt umber, maybe a little less brown, so it's not super dark at first. So yellow oxide's already kind of a dark yellow, the brown's gonna darken it just a little bit more. And we're just simply going to paint all of the back petals. So I will do another back petal, and this time I might load my brush in a different proportion of yellow oxide to that brown and that is also okay. I like to vary my colors, but same thing, just painting that back petal. I'm trying to go around those front petals, but if I accidentally paint over it, that's fine. I wanna make sure I paint the base of this petal where it would be attached to that center part. So I'm just going back to the bottom part of this one to paint that bottom piece. But again, you don't have to stay 100% in the lines, you can adjust your petals and we could slightly paint over some of the front ones. Um, that's the reason why we're doing the back ones first so that we can paint over anything we painted with the back petals. So the reason why I grabbed a little bit of white there was to give it a little bit of highlight. So I just grabbed a teeny bit of white on the tip of my brush, did a few little lines and let that blend in. So I'm basically just gonna do that same thing to each of my back petals. Again, varying the amount that I load my brush in. I could even grab a little bit of that burnt umber and not mix it with the yellow. I can just grab just the burnt umber. Maybe the bottom part of the petal is a little bit darker and the top part towards the edge is a little bit lighter. So you can kind of adjust those colors and you can see how they just kind of vary uh, and blend nicely on the canvas. You can grab a little bit of white. I can highlight maybe the top part of it a little bit with that white. Just don't wanna go too crazy with that white because these back petals are supposed to be darker than our front ones. And I'm just gonna continue to, to, to do the same technique. So making sure I paint the bottom part of it, varying my colors. You're even allowed to use some of that cad yellow. So if you wanna experiment, add a little bit of cadmium yellow, that other yellow on our palette, um, and mix that with the brown, you're welcome to do that. So just have fun and kind of play around with the different colors. Um, just keep in mind that these back petals are supposed to be darker. Um, some of the petals look like they might be front petals and that's okay. We can um, kind of make those like a medium yellow in the next step. But for the most part right now, we're just painting all the petals that seem to be um, towards um, the far back. So I'm gonna go silent here for a bit while I finish up painting any, all of my back petals. If there's anything else, any other tips I wanna give you, I will go ahead and share that with you.
The reason why I'm adding more brown down the bottom here is because this part should be a little bit dark and shadowy because it's the bottom and some of the front petals over it are going to be brighter. So I'm just going back over the base of my back petals, not all of them, but some of them with a little bit more of that burnt umber. Next, I'm going to paint all my front petals. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the brush off with a towel. It's not really necessary to rinse off, although you can rinse and start over if you feel like your brush is too overloaded. I'm gonna start with the yellow. So if I just did yellow and no white into this, that would be a little bit too see-through um, and not give you enough coverage, especially since our background is a dark color. So I am double loading my yellow. It, um, double loading my brush in the yellow and the white. And this is gonna give you a bright yellow color and you can see how bright that is already, especially next to our darker petal, it's gonna stand out. And that's kind of the point. We want our front petals to stand out from the back petals because we want those to look like they're closer and brighter and that's gonna give your sunflower that pretty depth and bright contrast that we want to see. So I am just loading into the white and then switching and loading into the yellow, just kind of alternating. A little bit of water. Um, my yellow dried out a little bit as I was doing my back petals, so I grabbed a bit of water, kind of swirled that into the paint and kind of refreshed it a little bit. Uh, so I'm just getting that shape painted in really defining that petal shape. Um, remember, they don't really go to a point, they're kind of curved at the top, and some of the petals kind of bend a little bit on the edges. You can grab a little bit of your white, and you can do like these um, uh, vertical streaks on your flower to give it a little bit of texture, but I like the unblended look, so I'm not gonna work that until it all turns the same color. I'm gonna leave it kind of unblended. And then, I'm gonna go to my next color. So we have, yellow oxide that we can still work with on our palette and we can mix our cad yellow with our yellow oxide and still make it look like a bright color and still add that white. But the reason why I added that yellow oxide is because this petal is so close to the one next to it, I wanna make sure they stand out from each other so I wanna make them look like they're two different yellows. So that one has a little bit more yellow oxide in it so it's a teeny bit darker than the one to the right of it. And that's why I'm doing that but kind of the same thing, just kind of letting those colors all blend together, but try not to over blend it. And I'm just making the, sure the far right part of that petal is slightly darker than the petal to the right of it so that it stands out and doesn't kind of mush together because they're the same color. And I'm just gonna apply that concept to all of my petals. Um, I can play around with my white, my yellow oxide, my cad yellow. I can even use some of the brown if you wanna add a bit of brown into some of that, maybe on the base, the bottom part of some of these, maybe that one's, maybe I can use the brown over here to make that a little bit darker so it stands out better. So it's really just kind of experimenting, playing with your colors. These four colors blend very well together. You're not gonna, it's not gonna end up being too muddy if you mix the wrong proportion of colors. So don't worry about that. Um, just keep in mind that your front petals um, need to be brighter to give it enough contrast uh, next to our darker, further back petals. So this one, I'm kind of using more of the yellow and the white, um, but maybe right here is gonna be lighter than the petal to the right so that can stand out. We can also utilize the fact that the canvas is black. So maybe there's a very thin black part of that canvas still showing through, and that could be some of the dark part of our uh, sunflower. So in other words, it's okay if you have a little bit of that dark canvas showing through. It's kind of a chalkboard effect when we paint on a dark background like this. Um, another thing I do want to mention, so I'm doing the, the brown little strokes on the bottom of the petals. You don't have to do that. If you don't like the look of that brown down there, that's okay. You don't have to do that. Um, but don't worry too much about the base of the petals, the bottom part of it, because we're gonna do the middle part, the middle part with the seeds. Uh, that circle is gonna overlap the bottom 
the base of our petals, it's going to slightly overlap the bottom of each of those petals. So you don't have to worry about what that bottom looks like because the seeds are going to be slightly overlapping anyway. Um, but you can take the petals and you can overlap your circle a little bit if you want to do that. Or you can just go to the circle and stop and let it be flat on um, that circle. So just varying that color. This petal right here is a bright yellow. I utilized more white and yellow for that. Um, at any time you feel like your brush is just um, overloaded, it's not doing what you want it to do, you can always, always rinse and dry or have your towel on hand and kind of wipe the brush off. Loaded my palette with some more of the Cad Yellow Medium color. I'm going back over that part right there that didn't have a lot of coverage. Not really liking this brown down here, so I'm just taking that yellow and kind of going over it a little bit more. Grabbing a little bit more white. I added white towards some of the edges of these petals just to make the edges kind of brighter, give it a little bit of contrast. But again, we just don't want to like over blend the colors, just give it a few um, different variety of colors. A little bit of white in that petal. Kept gravitating to this particular petal for some reason. Grabbed a little bit of white, added that on the bottom. And we're just gonna keep going with this. Keep filling each of our petals using that technique. I will go silent here, and if there's anything super important, I will let you know. Just make sure in the lower right region over here that all our petals are painted. It's kind of easy to leave some blank spots, but there shouldn't be blank black spots showing through at any part of the sunflower except towards the edges where there's uh, gaps. Um, but there's no gaps along the circle, if that makes sense. And then we're just gonna keep going to the left again varying your colors. Um, keep in mind that if you're painting a petal next to another one, you wanna kind of change the color. So this one, I'm gonna make it slightly darker than the one to the right of it, especially towards the edge of that right side, towards the left side of the, the petal on the right. So right here, I'm gonna make sure that color shows up a little bit differently since they're kind of touching each other. Another tip is to make sure that your strokes are long strokes. So I'm not doing this in short strokes. I'm doing it in like one long continuous stroke and they're going in the direction of the pedal. So don't do like short horizontal strokes, do long strokes. Um, if your paint is not flowing as well, see how those strokes are long and kind of curved. Um, you can always add just a pop of water into your paint to get it to flow better.
I'm going to go in and kind of highlight some of my petals with the white. Just try not to go too crazy with your white, um, but I'm just taking the white and gently adding some more vertical strokes along, long, thin lined strokes along some of the petals. So just taking that white, just kind of going along maybe the edge of it and the middle part gives it some texture and some color variation. You can even use your white to kind of um, outline some of the edges of the petals. This petal right here, I did a pop of white right along the edge and just kind of blended that in. I'm not gonna do that to all the petals because then it'll be a little bit too much contrast, too bright, but that looks really pretty. A little pop of bright white makes that yellow look a lot brighter. You can do it to this one. And we are pretty much done with our petal part. We're gonna work on the center part of our circle next. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the brush off. I already have burnt umber on my palette, so I'm going to use that. But I'm also going to use this reddish brown, which is burnt sienna. Um, that is an optional color, by the way, because I didn't use a lot of it. Uh, so if you don't have burnt sienna, that's okay. And then Mars black, so like a brown, a reddish brown, and a black. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a bigger round brush. You can do this with the four round, I suppose, but I just grabbed my number eight round brush because it's bigger and it covers the area faster. And I'm basically going to take the eight round brush and fill in my circle with this brown. So this is the burnt umber and I'm just filling in the circle. If any of your petals overlapped your circle, you can take that brown and you can go back over and define your circle. In other words, you can paint over the base of your petals where that circle is. Um, if you don't want to do that now, we are going to do that later with the um, texture brush. And I'll show you when we get to that step. So we have brown circle. This is just the base. We'll add some more colors to this in the next step. See, I'm just taking that circle and I'm going over some of those petals that may have overlapped. And then I'm gonna grab a bristle brush. So this is a round bristle brush. It has the kind of a, the, the natural sort of um, like wiry hairs, um, not synthetic, not soft, but um, kind of a scruffy texture. And I'm using this to make the texture of the seeds. So basically we're going to load it in the black and we're going to paint like a circular area towards the bottom uh, half of our, so like the center part of the circle, paint a black circular area. So the goal is to kind of make that kind of get lighter. Um, if you think of it kind of like a rainbow, the our colors are going to change because we're painting a half a circle right now, so we don't see the full circle. So I did black first. I made like a circular half circle area at the bottom with the black, and then I'm going to grab the brown. So I took that brown and added a little bit of the yellow oxide in there, but you don't have to do that. Um, just so it's lighter, I grabbed a little bit of that white too because it wasn't showing up. So just need a lighter color, so you can add white to it. Um, your brown, your yellow oxide, so it turns up kind of light. And we're gonna go around that black half circle we made. And I'm just tapping the brush. Um, it is blending with the colors below it, so it's blending with that base layer, that brown, and it's blending with our black. We want it to look like our black is fading into a lighter color as it goes up. So get it to kind of blend and we want to go all the way to the top. So um, grab some lighter color so we can do another layer of lighter color towards the top. At the very top edge it actually gets darker. Um, so we can even grab more white, more yellow oxide, add some more of that lighter color at the top. Just tapping the brush, creating that texture, kind of blending it together. 
little bit more white. Um, that was too much white, so I'm gonna grab some more of the brown and blend that back in. We just wanna make sure the bottom part of our sunflower is dark and that, so that bottom semicircle that's black, we wanna leave that dark. We don't wanna to touch that with too much of the lighter color. I'm just gonna take that light color, go all the way up, and just this brush, just tapping this brush creates that texture of that fuzzy center of the sunflower where our seeds are. Um, then, we're going to work on the, the circumference of the circle, that's the edge. So I am going to, on purpose, go outside the lines here. I loaded this in just the black, and I'm taking that, and I'm creating that edge, and I'm making those seeds overlap the base of our petal. I'm doing that on purpose, that's gonna give your sunflower a lot of depth. It's gonna give it kind of that realistic look. So this is black. You can also load it in a little bit of brown. If it's showing up too dark, add some more burnt umber in there, but it should be darker than the area, like the area below it. Um, so this is a darker piece, just almost as dark as that center bottom part where that dark black semicircle is. So I'm just going outside of my line on purpose, making it look like that. That is overlapping those petals, just tapping the little strokes going over our petals. We don't wanna go up too high though, just along the edges, making sure that part looks dark. And then I can blend it down into the lighter color to make it look like that dark color is blending into the lighter part of my sunflower. Add some more black down here. I am going to now utilize some of this burnt sienna. I did mention burnt sienna is optional because it really is optional. It always shows up a little bit. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off and grab my burnt sienna. So this is a reddish color. It's gonna show up that way, kind of a reddish color. I'm gonna add that sparingly into my sunflower. I don't wanna blend it too much or alter the color of this too much, but just a few little taps of burnt sienna here and there gives it kind of a reddish tone in there, some more color interest. Then I'm gonna go in with some lighter, so some white. So I didn't rinse my brush off, a little bit of that white just kind of blended with whatever colors were still on my brush. I'm just gonna tap a few little areas, little pops of tiny white dots here and there. Not really going down the bottom part because I'm leaving that part dark. I'm just going back in with some of my other browns and yellows on my palette and just kind of tapping over that, blending that. So just more layers, create some more dimension and depth and texture. Um, another thing is try not to like overdo it. So the more you work this, it's gonna end up all kind of mushing together and be the same color. So you wanna really kind of focus on not over blending, but at the same time, adding more layers of colors without over blending. Uh, going back towards the top part, adding another layer of that dark color along the edge of that circle. Then I'm gonna go in and work this circular area to make it look more circular. I'm just adding a bit more black down there to make that piece look a little bit more rounded. And that is it for the center texture part. We can add more to it later if we feel we need to, but I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how I did the quote. So you can write anything up here. I just decided to write peace, love, and sunshine. Um, you can write a Bible verse, your favorite quote, you can write your last name, your first name, whatever you want to write up here. You don't even have to write anything if you don't want to, if you want to just leave it like that. But I um, am drawing it in pencil first, in cursive, so I make sure my letters are fitting and um, I have it the way I want so I know what it's going to look like. So I'm writing my piece, Love and Sunshine. Sometimes I will like look up a font on Google and just kind of try to mimic that font or I just do pretty cursive. So whatever you wanna do. And then 
This is a white Posca paint pen. The white will show up against the dark background. So I am going over my letters with the white paint pen and it shows up nice and bright. Sometimes I don't go over my letters, but I will adjust as I'm writing. And then when this dries, I can get an eraser and erase any leftover pencil lines. If you mess up on your lettering, the this can be painted over. You could always grab a like wet baby wipe and erase it before it dries. So that could work. Um, but this is permanent. It doesn't work like a chalk marker. It will dry like paint. So, but you can use a chalk marker if you wanted to adjust this and change the letters, um, change the quotes. Um, then I took my paint pen and I just kind of loosely outlined some of the petals. It might be tempting <laughs> to outline all of your petals, but um, I did not choose to outline all of them. I just loosely kind of outlined some of them to give them just a little bit of pop of white without making it look too outlined. Then I took my paint pen and decided to do like a few little dots in the center part, kind of brighten that up a little bit. I did a few dots in the black area, but decided later on that I didn't like those, so I ended up painting over that. And then I decided to do little pin dot polka dots in the background. So I just took my paint pen and made little dots all over the background. At any time you decide you don't want to do this or you want to change something or add different designs, you are more than welcome to do that. So I just did little pin dots kind of all over the background. Then I took my brush in the black and went back over these, decided to, I didn't like that too much. I wanted that to be pure black in that area. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a sunflower with a quilt. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.